G, oh, when you walk onto the field and somebody's like, hey, our running back's cold and he's five foot six, you might be like, oh, I got this for like two plays. <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> then you're going to see why that man can play Division One football at five foot six. It's <laughs> proportions, though, too. If you're five, six, and you 190, that's like six three two forty. Like, mm -hmm. like that's a lot of mass in one little area. Like, that's like a black hole. Like, that has infinite mass. Like, dudes like that will run you over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the barbershop. Look who I found loitering outside the shop. I yeah. told him I would get him a cut, and he said, let's see, I need to show up now. Evidently. Uh, he still has the keys to the place, so he'd be just pulling up. He was in the chair. So I'm that dude that showed up to the barbershop just to pay checkers. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> you ever had that one guy who just playing chess, never got a cut? Never. <laughs> Always I, got an Arizona. <laughs> like, to, and don't let him have my uncle, you know, have a barbershop. There was a dude from Cincinnati that used to just drive up from the natty to talk trash in the barbershop to eat coffee, eat the free donut, eat the free donuts to get the free coffee. And on mm -hmm. in the Jet magazine, my uncle's was <laughs> my first encounter with a real alcoholic was at the barber shop because I was like, why does this man always have his Arizona in a paper bag? <laughs> and somebody had to tell me that's not Arizona. That ain't no Arizona <laughs> fruit punch, dog. <laughs> that's old what? old English. What the hell? What? <laughs> old English. Man, let's, uh, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit on a, ma a matter of fact, if you haven't checked the episode out, dope episode, once he got it up, man, over there uh, on one of his, I don't know how many shows he got. It's on one of them, one of them shows. He got it over there. Just check it out. He'll put it up. But we talked about the defense, talked about Miles Garrett and how accidentally Miles Garrett might have just creeped into one of the greatest moves of all time by going to motion. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out over there because it's a dope blog. Uh, but over here, we're going to get to the, the, the comparison, man. Deshaun Watson, I looked at your, uh, your situation um, with the film breakdown, and I, I thought it was interesting for the film breakdown that you kind of isolated some things in Pittsburgh that showed – it wasn't really like Deshaun Watson was super off. It was just like a couple of things here and there. That like, ah, I like to read. Like, he could have went here, but it's it's an okay throw. It's a couple things here or there that you can make, make better. And then you get to the next game, and them things that you was highlighting, he just kind of stepped over all that and was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make all of these throws. You started to see the intermediate throws, the sideline throws, the, the escapability and, and still being accurate. I mean, what was it that you saw? Like, what was the catalyst for that? Like, that that he just it, it, he was he was Deshaun Watson again. He hit a big play. I think that like he hit a big play, and it was because of something that they schemed up and they trusted. Right, that Jerome Ford big play wasn't a coverage bust. It was a tendency breaker. Right, you know how they always run that little shallow cross across mm -hmm. when they run that five wide set as a check now, basically. And I remember saying in the film break now it was there. It was there. You should probably take it more often. But I noticed that they ran it with Jerome Ford. It was running with Pierre Strong all, mm -hmm. all game versus Pittsburgh. They ran it with Jerome Ford. And what they did was they knew that the Tennessee Titans had something for that, right? The way that they play that, they like to crash in on it with their linebacker because they know it's coming. Okay, we're going to fake the shallow cross up and over. Right up and over, and we're gonna get that. But in order to hit that, what do you need to do? The second you see it, the second you see Jerome put that move on, the second you see the leverage for the linebacker of Alzier, you need to throw it and trust it. It's gonna be there. And he threw it, he trusted it, it's gonna be there. And it was like, oh, all right, there it is. That's the big play. We can still do this. I can still do this. Cause you gotta remember, man, when's the last time Deshaun Watson had a big game and a win? Yeah, it's been a while. It, it's you, been like you, you can you can years. argue it's probably been since 2019, right? Because a lot of those 2020 wins they were out of the season. Yeah, it the was time that they got there, so it really wasn't the same. But like in a big win, it's been since 2019 since he's had a good game, and he was frustrated, and you can see it. And then he's playing in rivalry games, and you can see it. And what you saw was somebody who came into the game was just taking what was there at the beginning and then found that trust, right? When you really knew 
when he really started to feel himself was when he started dealing them deep balls down the sideline, right? Like oh, yeah, last yeah, yeah, week, yeah. when yeah, when he yeah. started to just when he, he started to be like, one. okay, yeah, yeah. this safety in the middle of the field. Oh, I'm tossing that right there to Coop, letting him make a play on it, and he gets a dime there. Same thing to DPJ, right? Yeah. That's where you're like, oh, okay, now Deshaun is cooking with Gat. Now he's not waiting to see it come open; he's yeah. throwing it open, right? Like in that, both those balls he threw open because those were not open. He found them open, and that's how you get the old Deshaun, right? He had a backside dig, he had a he had a cross, a uh, slant, or a post going up the middle. You know what I mean? Like you saw some of those things where it's like okay now he's starting to make plays with his arm not just complete them right completing plays is when things are there you take them and look you need quarterbacks to do that that's why Tom Brady's great Tom Brady can make plays but he completes the most plays of anybody right if you scheme this up know this is going to be open on this coverage and you get that coverage you're going to get that play by Tom and yeah, that's what makes yeah. Tom the greatest of all time that's what makes him consistent you need him to do that Deshaun needs to do that and he did that but what makes Deshaun Deshaun and what makes any quarterback elite instead of Kirk Cousins, because Kirk Cousins can complete the plays, he can't make them, though, right? And that was playmaking. Those two balls on the sideline where he threw it up, that was playmaking. When he saw Amari Cooper get that look and he was on page to get that ball out right when he did, and people were criticizing the throw on that, oh, Amari had to slow down. Would you want him to overthrow him just to get it perfect? Like what? This, just get the damn ball to him. How many times did we see Baker Mayfield miss somebody wide open because he's trying to get it to him in his stride? No, he said it in his post-game press conference. My goal is to make sure I don't ever overthrow somebody on the busted coverage play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like you all you want to make sure he can catch it. Yeah, and that's then it. If, and then, like, you know, if you get it in stride, cool, but I'm not about to risk the completion uh. to get that in stride. So people who are criticizing that, I'm just like, you're just nitpicking at that point. Yeah. Uh, and the Jerome Ford one, again, that wasn't busted coverage. That was a completed play. Like, he saw it, threw it. There was one like that with Elijah Moore on, um, was it Quan? Or was it, uh, it was a linebacker that they have on Pittsburgh. They had one in the middle of the field. He didn't get it off in time. He didn't trust it. He didn't see it. He didn't get it. They, mm -hmm. They've been this close away from that play all season. They finally made that play. And I think that's going to give everybody a sigh of relief. And I think Deshaun's going to come in now. Is one thing executing in practice. It's one thing executing in the preseason. It's another thing when you feel like that dude during the game, right? Like that gives you a second level of confidence when you get that good game, right? Because now you come in there and you're like, I can make that throw. And you're not hesitating. It's on film. It's on tape. Like, you know, once you have it on film, and I think, like, at the end, I've been talking about this a lot. I think that's why you see that chest bump with Coach Stefanski at the end of the game when he did hit that that play to Amari Cooper because they have been about this close to hitting a lot of stuff. They have been going over the different plays that they want to do and what, what the plan they is. They left and, no and big it, plays on the field. None. And, and, and that Titans defense is better than people think. Oh, yeah, and why and why all of a sudden, this is my thing, why all of a sudden now the goalpost is moving on who's good or not? The Titans got a, a, a good defense. Now all of a sudden they trash? I'm like, no. The Titans They were really – they were disciplined on play action. They weren't really like – they were playing pretty good football um, for most of the game. Like they had the one bad play with Coop where they just kind of let him split the coverage. But – Hey man, it happens in football sometimes. Like Simmons like, was a monster up front too. Yeah, Simmons is a monster. It's really hard to run on them. Like that's a good defense, and I think people are kind of like poo pooing on it because they just they they. I always want to say that they don't want a reason to believe, but it's like we're so used to being cynical that we don't want to believe off of nothing. So we want it to be undeniable. Like he got to put up five hundred versus San Francisco before we can start to like really get excited because so many people are afraid of getting hurt. But that's a good defense. Like I thought that they played some good defensive football. I thought the Sean made a bulk of those plays, not because the defense was just giving them to him. That was the commanders game, right? Like that commanders game retrospectively probably had a lot of like. I don't know if this is the sign we all thought it was. Right. Right. But you look at this game, you're like, nah, he was making plays. Like he was, he was a plus, plus, plus player on that side of the ball. And the more I look at that game and I'm like, okay, that Monday night game was a mirage because he still can do this at a high level. Now, do you think, and you mentioned, um, you know, a lot of people moving these, these goalposts a little bit. And I think there's, there's a thing where um, people want to be, 
over they they got to be overly told something like they got to make it clear they got to show up to them like in, in a dream or something for them to believe that the browns a their defense is playing this way and and b that deshaun watson that was the definitive thing that shows that deshaun watson is on track when you look at this game against the baltimore ravens playing against lamar jackson do you think this is a game where if the Browns could come out and, and, and Deshaun Watson has a good game and he outdoes Lamar Jackson and the Browns defense kind of shuts it down, that people will have to finally come around and be like, well, listen, maybe, yeah, this Brown thing's not a mirage. There will be more people who will be willing to come around. There's going to be the people who like, we got to see what they do against San Francisco, even though it's an out-of-conference opponent. It's not as important as a game as this one. Um, you know, there, there are going to be people who are, are going to want to see it in the playoffs. There are going to be people who want to see it in a big playoff game. Like, the goalpost <laughs> right. is going to be moved no matter what, and that's part of playing sports, right? If I get 1,000 yards, I don't get into the Hall of Fame. Right. Now the goal is to get 1,500 yards, right? And then when I get 1,500 yards, okay, get 1,500 yards back-to-back-to-back to back to back and lead the league in touchdowns. Okay, now if I do that, am I in the Hall of Fame? Probably, right? Like, the post gets moved and moved and moved based on how good of a player you are. Look, the bar was not high for Deshaun this week. The bar was just look decent, man, because it was bad last week. And he looked great. So now the bar, the goal post is going to be, hey, look great against the Ravens. He does that. Look great against the 49ers. He does that. All right, look great all season. He does that. Look great in the playoffs. He does that. Win in the playoffs. He does that. Win in the Super Bowl. And then if he does that, do it again, right? That's just yeah. the, the nature of being a, a a pro athlete and trying to achieve things. The goalpost should always be moving for himself because he should never feel like he has succeeded until he has reached all of his goals. And the goalpost is always going to move for him because people expect that he's that good, right? I know people bring up his contract to death, but the Browns don't sign somebody to that amount of money unless they think that that's somebody who's going to be an integral part to a Super Bowl run or two. And that's that's where the bar is. Uh, that's where the bar, the end all be all bar for him is ultimately going to be. Can you get two Super Bowls? Can you get one Super Bowl? Can you get to a championship game like that? Those are going to be the things that matter because ultimately we're not going to be like, hey, Deshaun Watson was fun. We paid him two hundred thirty million dollars and we made the playoffs one time. Like that's not going to be enough for anybody at the end of the day. So yeah, the goalpost gonna keep moving on him, but that's partly because people expect great things. Look, the goalposts don't move on people that they that we think are scrubs, right? You know, Tommy told yeah. me I get three sacks of the game, dog. I'm not about to be like get four. You know what I mean? Nah, no, listen, I'm about to be like, be like frame hey, that bro. <laughs> look, bro. Frame that jersey. Celebrate dog. that. You know what I mean? Like look with certain players, you move the bar. With certain players, you don't. Deshaun's the level of player where, you know, I know a lot of people complain about it because they're like, they just want him to get his props or whatever it is, but you should want that bar to be moved. A 300-yard game against the Titans with two touchdowns, that's cool, but that's not like, oh, man, we right on this trade, cool. Like, that's, right, right. that's the, you nah. got so much more room to go, so much more progress to make before you can claim something as a victory. So, you know, I think Deshaun knows that. I think Kevin knows that. And I think all the people that are important in this situation know that. And it's not necessarily an insult that the goalposts keep changing on them. Not everybody's intentions are like, Oh, I think he's great. That's why I moved to goalposts. Some people are just like, you know, they don't like the dude. So <laughs> they just they just moved to goalposts. I just don't like yeah. some people don't like, don't some, like some Yeah, don't like, like it's it's just that. Or, but you know, ultimately it shouldn't bother anybody. And I said this, like everybody gets mad that the Browns don't get this coverage and this and that. And I'm like, it don't matter, man. Like, be undeniable. The, the goal of this season is to be undeniable. So who cares if you're getting covered in week two, getting your props? That's not the end of like you want to be undeniable. At the end of the day, Joe Burrow got the the brokest franchise in NFL <laughs> in the NFL on the map. Yeah, they, they because he was them. undeniable, right? You got to be undeniable, and if you want that love, you are gonna have to get it in Cleveland because you stunk for so long by being undeniable. So I'd rather worry about that than oh, are we getting this praise and why aren't people showing us the yeah, love? It, it, it don't matter, what? dog. We gonna we gonna we gonna make it happen eventually. It, it, it's either now or later. And, and and one of the things, well, one of the people that 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 I think is undeniable, um, you talk about always moving the goalposts, but I don't think is there any goalposts to move for the for the defense like. Like I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've suspended all uh, imagination when it comes to the Browns' defense. Like one of the things we talked about is like, 
is there a ceiling for what they are doing at this point? Because they're being innovative. They're flying around having fun. And I can't identify anybody on that defense that is not playing above where I thought they were going to play. Even Miles Garrett is playing above what I've seen Miles Garrett do. Is there a level for that? Like a ceiling for them? Yeah, is there a ceiling? Like, so, so one of the questions is, can is this sustainable? A lot of people is kind of at arm length differences because they they make it a lot of people I look think crazy. It is like I, I, as crazy as it sounds, I really think it is sustainable because it's it's not like we're requiring in order to do this impossible efforts from players that we know can't keep it up. Yeah. We're just like Miles be Miles, Denzel be Denzel. And it like it's not like AJ Green's out here playing incredible, right? Like that would be like, okay, that's only gonna last about three, four weeks. They're gonna figure that one out. The the thing that makes this like the personnel is what makes this different, is because you're getting these things from guys who you've seen do this in the NFL before. Like it's just the result of having this much talent. And honestly, the only thing that I see getting in their way is their health, right? Like if they can stay healthy throughout the season, this is this is a defense that, you know, look, every once in a while we get a defense with a nickname. They're good defenses every year, right? The 49ers are a good defense. The, yeah. the Eagles were a good defense yeah. last year. But you're good Seahawks, long enough, Legion you start getting a nickname. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And this is a defense that, hey, if they keep this up, for a season, they gonna get a nickname. And like pe <laughs> people trying to be trying to find one right now. Like they nah, just you gotta let silently. It happen. You gotta let it happen. <laughs> you gotta, you let, gotta it let it happen. Some dudes you, gonna show up with the sign, you and you gonna not, see it, and we gonna like, be that's like, it. "That's it. That's you can't be you hanging can't get, on to your nickname if it ain't hot. Like it's, it's gonna not happen. Fire. Listen, don't come in here giving your own nickname. No one calls you. No one calls you T Money. <laughs> You know what I mean? Your name is Tom. That that happens a lot in college. You get to college and somebody like, yo, yeah, call me Dollar Sign. Yeah. Did Whoa. anybody call you Dollar Sign? Because like, I swore yo, your mama just called you Jarrell. Like, Jarrell, you like, listen, like yo, Jarrell sign. Jr. You're broke. Boy, you JJ. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And then you always find out when they boys come back from the crib, they got a couple dudes from high school come visit them and they be like, man, what's up, Jarrell? I thought it was Jay. What? Who's this Jay Money cat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay Money. He told y'all what? what? Nah, that's <laughs> nah. that's little rail out there. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. They, like they call him Pookie. <laughs> <laughs> Pookie nasty. Pookie licious. <laughs> look, look. You don't ever get the nickname. You demand. You want. You get the nickname that you get, man. Yeah, if like, you get a cold you... one, keep it. Right. That's why prime prime times. Uh, Dion Sanders is ex explanation of why they. Call a bribe. He's like, somebody said it and I took it. Like, the, he just took it. Like, you know, it's, it's like, me. somebody call you prime time, you take that, right? And if you and can you. live up to it, live up to it. Because and here's you. the thing you can have a dope nickname and then you start playing bad. Oh. And then your prime time come into a different thing that rhyme with prime time. Yeah. And then now <laughs> your nickname ain't the thing, man. Ain't, ain't what do you want? Now you, now you get called dick or something like that. <laughs> 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 the nickname you is get, a dangerous gamble, you right? A, because you get an exotic dancer name like Cinnamon. <laughs> Look at Cinnamon yep. over here toasted. <laughs> hey man, you know Cinnamon saying, Toast Crunch. <laughs> yeah, like, it be bad, bro. Like, it, Boy, it, it could get real deadly for you. You know right how here. bold Sauce Gardner is for walking out there and, and using his nickname as his surname. Sauce. Like he said, I'm sauce. I got a bottle of hot sauce. That's why I was like, either this brother is cold or he gonna have a rough rookie year. And it turned out the brother's cold. Right? It, like, it, it, it's <laughs> like you gotta think about it. Like, there's some certain names that you there's no coming back from. Like, like Booger McFarlane had to be good. Like he had no choice but to be a thug. Like you can't, like, nah, like you, you nah, gotta you can't be. You can't be ass and your name be Booger. Like, at all. At all. Like, it's just not It's not going to work for you, bro. It's just, and you it's know, just, look, you know people play extra hard when you're playing against a dude with weak name. You know what I mean? Like, 
<laughs> they hitting you with the, they hitting you with all the special moves. They you know they've I mean? been saving the move for you, bro. Like hesitation, <laughs> crossover, spinover. Like they they you play against a move. Steve with no swag. All you like, I got it, bull rush him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like ain't no ain't no the, way a Tristan about to block me up. Like that's not about to happen. <laughs> listen, your name is Eli or Chauncey. <laughs> Chauncey. You're like Chauncey. You let Chauncey lock you up? Hey, look, no. If that if the program say he Chauncey, but from a state, a city in Georgia you never heard of, you don't want it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that is a country Chauncey. Yeah, like that's crazy. Them hands are strong, dog. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Or, or you know, there's get, there could be like girls or boys' names that could be more like Shannon, like Shannon, like we know Shannon Sharp now, but like in '96, '95, like you couldn't be named. It's Shannon. a reason Shannon Sharp lit the weights. He was undersized, and his name was Shannon. He had like, to put the hurt on people. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, like had, come on. Speaking man. of, the Ravens have somebody like that. Where I'm like, Zay Flowers plays football like somebody who got called small a lot and hated it. <laughs> like, yeah, like he, like he, he don't is, ever go out of. <laughs> he's Maurice Jones Drew size. Like he don't even like it when you compare him to somebody. Like I bet somebody says every day, "You remind me of Steve Smith," and yeah. he get furious. Like what? Do, you, you, what? What about me? You see Steve Smith in? I play more size. like Calvin Johnson in my first life. <laughs> In my mind, I'm Megatron. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, you're, the, you're, you're, you're one of them cassette tapes that come out of Soundwave's chest. That's you want I mean. nothing to do with the five foot four guy that makes it to the league and becomes a. You want nothing to do with Darren Sproles. We, it's well documented. You want nothing to do with Clyde Edwards LL. Okay. <laughs> like, oh no, like cause like them do like that's like when when they when they started naming Maurice Jones Jew pocket dynamite, like his legs, he like husky to, at the bottom. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he, these dudes can hurt you. They're like, we're not trying to do all that, man. G, oh, when you walk onto the field and somebody's like, hey, our running back's cold and he's five foot six, you might be like, oh, I got this for like two plays. <laughs> you know, you, then you're going to see why that man can play Division one football at five foot six. It's <laughs> proportions, though, too. If you five, six and you 190, that's like six, three, two, forty. Like, mm -hmm. like that's a lot of mass in one little area. Like, that's like a black hole. Like, that has infinite mass. Like, dudes like that will run you over like very quickly. So, man, you know what? I, I, listen, can I get a? Get, let me get a prediction. Let me get up out of here. What prediction we got? And, and is the Browns going into the bye week uh, sitting pretty? Let's see, I don't usually do win or loss predictions, but I uh, think if the Browns, if the Browns play. If they're able to get that pressure with their front five and if Deshaun's able to get relative success, I think the real key in this game is if David Njoku has production, right? If you're able to get David Njoku involved in this game over the middle of the field, that means you're having success. That means that the Browns can win this game. I think that the matchups are in favor of Cleveland. It's about if they play a clean game and if they play a, 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 a turnover free game on offense, I think the that the Ravens going to give you some opportunities here. I think this, this is a game that they should be able to handle. I don't think Baltimore creates as many problems for you that should overwhelm you. And honestly, this is one of those games where you can lose them. You can lose any game in the NFL. But if you do lose it, it might be more about you than it is about them. So, you know, you got to go in there, take care of business, play a clean football game at home, take care of the home field, and get to the bye week undefeated in Cleveland Brown Stadium. Hey, listen, man, listen. Hey, take it for Quincy. If they take an L, go over to his channel. Check him out. He's going to make you feel better. He'll talk all smooth and everything. He'll make you feel better about it. But if you come over here, I'm going to be mad, and I'm going to be – my knees going to be wobbling. I'm going to be emotional. I'll be back on Monday. But <laughs> yeah, better. G Bush broke no a lot of helmets in his playing day. I can yeah. tell. Ah! I can tell. He broke a lot of helmets. A lot of <laughs> Lot of Why you bumping into me? <laughs> How you don't know this twist? How you rolling into my legs? I had you, him. 
You wait to take a shower after me. Nah, I got to be gone. I don't even want to see y'all. I don't want to no, see your faces, man. <laughs> quarterback with three or 20. Like, hey, ah. you, you was on that sideline. Lighting them up. You man, was lighting I'm, them up. I'm, I'm giving been, coaches the side eye. What you looking at over here? You didn't call a good game either. <laughs> Chief Bush was giving up. his coaches play suggestions in the game. I bet and they love you. <laughs> hey, man, you lucky. Well, wait till we get to film Monday. I'm going to have to tell you something, man. With that being said, I got to go, man. We'll, be, we'll holler at you, man. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button. I need we that biked up later. Ohio University tape. I need that, y'all. We <laughs> Somebody that. find it. I need that. that I need tape to see G. Bush on the sideline now. <laughs> 20. <laughs> like, I need to see it. That tape's gone. <laughs> Peace. Peace.